people who are consistent and dependable and answer their phone and do what they say they're going to do. Those are all traits that people are attracted to. So if you can sit down and write a list of all the traits that people are attracted to and then just be those things, you know, every day and live those, live by those traits, then you're going to have your people are going to be attracted to you. You're taking it as a personal like insult, you know, like you're taking it as like a uh, attack on your character. And the fact of the matter is, is how can they even judge you? It's been 2.7 seconds. You know what I mean? They don't really know you. They don't know your intentions. They don't know anything. All they know is you called them and they're just reacting uh, in a way that um, they feel like they're supposed to react. You know what I mean? And it has nothing to do with you. That They would cuss out anybody that they called that they didn't know. It's not you. You know what I mean? It's them. That's just how they are. They just cuss people out for no reason. Um, so, I mean, you just got to understand that um, they're not judging you. And, like, here's the thing. Your intentions are to help them, right? Right. Right. So in your mind, when you stand behind the fact that you're there to help them, it shouldn't matter what they think or if they cuss you out or whatever they do, because, you know, you were just there to help them. And so when you get into the, that mindset, it turns into a situation of, whoa, 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 sir. You know, hold, hold on just a second there before you get too crazy and everything. Can I ask you why you're getting all crazy and stuff? All I did was at, call and ask you how you're doing today. You know what I mean? Like, what's up here? Like, I called, I was nice, and you're being real hateful to me. You know, can I just, you know, just out of curiosity, ask you what's wrong with you? There's people that are going to be nice. There's people that are going to be mean. That's, that's business. You know what I mean? But the fact is, is that if you put five hard years in of calling and making a goal to make five new friends of property owners every day, you're going to have 5,000 people uh, on a list of property owners who you're friends with. How big is your business at that point? And at that point in five years, when you have 5,000 property owners who love you and want to do business with you, do you care about the, hold on, do you care about the, you know, you know, 2,500 people who cussed you out and hung up on you? No, you don't care in five years because you're selling 50 to 100 properties a year in your sleep, standing on your head because you've created an autom automatic business through your personal brand through the weekly email and you put that work in to build your name up in your local market. You don't care about the people that cussed you out because now you have so many people that didn't cuss you out that are now friends with you and want to do business with you, whatever happened. And now you're at a point where, guess what? You don't have to make calls anymore. People love honest people. Right? What are some other traits? People love hard workers and people who are consistent and dependable and answer their phone and do what they say they're going to do. Those are all traits that people are attracted to. So if you can sit down and write a list of all the traits that people are attracted to and then just be those things, you know, every day and live those, live by those traits, then you're going to have your people are going to be attracted to you, but you're going to have people cuss you out. I don't care how good you are. If I made calls right now, people would cuss me out. Right? It doesn't matter how great you are. I'm not saying I'm great, by the way. I'm saying it doesn't matter how good you are. People are going to, you know, you're going to have negative responses and positive responses. But you don't focus on the negative. You focus on the positive. And you build off that. You build your little foundation of people. You know, you build your little tribe, your audience, your database. If somebody cuts you out on the phone, are you going to recognize them in Publix? <laughs> Are they going to recognize you? No. You didn't see each other. You just talked on the phone. No. So you got to understand, no, they're never, you are never going to talk to that person again. And whatever they said does not matter. What matters is that you're doing everything you've got to do to build your business as large as you can possibly build it up to your full potential to provide the best life for you and your family. That's what matters. Not what's not the person that cussed you out. Who cares about that? We're over here trying to build a business. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look, 10, only 90% of agents fail. You know that, right? Yes, sir. So you got to be in the top 10% just to squeeze by. So every, so everything that enters your mind, 
you need to be thinking, okay, what way is the 10% of the industry thinking and what way is the 90%? Because if I take, okay, scared to get cussed out and I think, okay, what are the 10% you know, the winners in the industry doing with that scenario and what are the 90% losers of the industry doing, right? I would think the 10% people don't care about getting cussed out at all. It's not even, it's not even like on their radar, right? And then 90%, the 90% of people, more than likely they're scared to get cussed out. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So uh, every situation you encounter, I want you to be on the 10% side. Of, the, of that situation, you know what I mean? As your career progresses, this changes, okay? As your database grows, like you can't call, like when, if you have, you know, 10,000 in your database, can you call those people? No, you cannot call those people. Because here's the difference, when you call Pat, when, you, when you're cold calling, you could call 10,000 people in a matter of months, you know, using a dialer, but that's cold calling, where some of the numbers are bad, you've got people, that, and the average cold call when you talk to someone is like three minutes, okay? When you're calling your, your people in your database, number one, these are all correct numbers, so they're good numbers. You're gonna have a lot higher pickup rate. Some of these people did business with you or know who you are, they're gonna see you on the caller ID, they're gonna answer, you're gonna have a lot bigger pickup rate because I'm so busy closing deals, right? Helping people and working deals. And I got to where I couldn't do the Christmas card at all. I mean, I was just too busy, I couldn't do it. Um, and like, what I realized was the weekly email does the trick. I mean, the weekly email, the week of Christmas is the Christmas card, right? And I can include a little gift there. Nowadays, you can include, you know, things digitally. You can have digital gifts, you can give people Starbucks, you can do all kinds of things digitally now, gift-wise. So, yeah, I mean, it just depends on where you are in your career. Uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the size of your database. There's a house right around the corner that just sold from you. Just calling to see if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. You know, like you just follow through there and you keep going like it is the right person until they start to act like it's not the right person. And then you start doing your whole, you know, well, that's weird, here's your name right here. Well, let me ask you, you looking for a good real estate agent? So like commercial guys, um, I've went through this before, you know, they have like 50, you know, you know, clients like a, a residential agent needs to have like five to 10,000, you know, clients in their database send in a weekly email to a commercial guy, you know, he can have like, you know, 30 to 50 clients and that's all they need and growing. It's a bubble that's growing and growing. These sellers want to sell. They want to sell bad, but they can't sell because they, they're nothing to buy and they're scared they're gonna leave money on the table. So they're just waiting. They're waiting for something to shift with the market in, in terms of inventory. They're waiting to see where the top of the market's gonna be so they don't leave any money on the table. What's gonna happen is we're gonna go, 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 go here and then something's gonna happen, either interest rates or you know economic you know downfall or uh, something, you know, who knows? Nobody knows what those, what that thing is going to be that scares everyone. I think it's going to be, honestly, maybe the feds raise interest rates unexpectedly. Like if they did, if they're like, right now they're saying, oh, they're going to be low for a couple years. If they actually came out and said, we're going to raise it a little here, that's going to scare everybody half to death. I mean, it's great right now as it is. You know, but to know that that's right behind it is just going to be something incredible. Then I think we'll go to just kind of a normal, more balanced market at that point. May even start leaning towards a buyer's market to a certain extent. We'll see. You know, that's yet to be determined. You know, but that'll be, it'll be a great market. I'll tell you that after all the dust settles, it's going to be a great market, great market to be in, incredible market to be in. So. Um, everything points towards just an incredible next couple of years for real estate. Okay, just so you guys know. A lot of people are talking about this crazy crash and stuff. That could happen, and if it does, it's going to be a great moment for real estate agents. Right? Come on, investors. Right? Come on, investors. There's like, there's a, there's a, uh, somebody told me there's like, 26 new billionaires a day or a week or a month or something like that. There's like tons of like the wealth is there's so many people like with money. Okay. Um, and when this thing goes down, everybody learned their lesson from 2008. People are going to be waiting for the market to come down. I'm waiting. A lot of people are waiting with cash waiting to, you know, if and when the market crashes.